Hello guys, I hope you have watched the previous set of videos where we have learned about each version of Java and its new features till Java 16. Now it's time to learn about the new version Java 17 and why it is important to learn as a developer we are going to see in a note of it. Myself Karthik Punasami from Red Tech, I am going to tell you why Java 17 is very very important to understand its new features as a Java developer. Let's get started. First thing, Java 17 is the LTS support. What is LTS support from Oracle? Long-term support. LTS means long-term support from Oracle itself, which means Oracle is recommending the companies to go from whatever the version area of Java to Java 17, which means Oracle is going to provide long-term support for this version Java 17. After Java 8, Oracle is supporting like Java 11 and Java 17 and Java 21. So we have to understand very clearly like what is LTS and also we have to understand like what and all the new features has been introduced in java 17 guys i'm going to uh, show you in the real programming uh, way but before that i want to give you the high level outline of what and all we are going to see so first one we are going to see about what is sealed classes and interfaces how it actually works and why it has been introduced second thing pattern matching with respect to switch switch case statements switch expressions and what is the difference between all those stuff we are going to see it then they have improved their garbage collection and also they have removed the RMA concepts going forward after Java 17, the RMA won't be there. Okay. Uh, I mean, the old way of RMA won't be there. And uh, they are also introducing some of the concepts like very new to use some foreign memory and uh, much more. Okay. So we are going to see everything in practical. Let's get started. Now, let's see what and all they have introduced in Java 17. Yes, first thing we have to understand about sealed classes and interfaces. What is sealed class and how it actually works is what we are going to see first. So first of all, before we get into there, what is the sealed class? Okay, Sealed class is nothing but in terms of inheritance, if you want to control the inheritance by restricting any subclass and sub interfaces to specific location within the same package, which means within the same package, if I want to restrict any of the classes or interfaces to action my class or my implement my interface, then I can go for sealed class, which is nothing but whenever I write some class or interface, if you want to seal it so that I can give permission only to the class and interface, which only I want it. Otherwise, I don't want to give everyone to uh, action my class or implement my interface. So that's the reason that it has been evolved and it is actually giving like type safety and also prevent unintended implementations. Okay. And how it actually works, we are going to see with help of permitted subclasses uh by using like a final keywords okay let's assume i'm creating one interface called sealed interface okay where i'm going to have something called shape okay here i have something called one method called double area now i'm just creating a class called class circle which implements shape nothing but i have a shape interface and then i'm creating a circle class which implements shape interface so automatically i'm going to get the inheritance right so here you okay, see here I'm creating one more method called double radius okay and also double area is what i'm going to get it which i'm going to override here of course i can able to override it but here if i want to mention that this shape interface can be implemented only by circle class then i can use the keyword called permits permits circle which means only circle can able to implement my interface called shape okay also, if I want to have one more interface or if I want to have one more class to implement my interface, then I can also create this class like it's, let's say class rectangle, which implements shape and then I can override it. But here I have to give whatever the permits. So we have to understand very clearly. If I want to permit right any class or interfaces, then I have to give here with the help of keyword called permits. If I don't give it, it will be, uh, it won't be able to override it. Okay. Final thing is we have to understand why we are using final class here instead of just normal class. Let's say if I don't use this as a final, what will happen? Even someone can be able to implement this um, or action this circle class so that they can also get this uh, area, isn't it? So that's why I need to restrict this class uh, implemented class also to be final. Okay, so this is how like actual sealed class and interface works. Now let's move on to the next topic called pattern matching. Pattern matching, what is first pattern matching? We have to understand first. Okay, it is basically a more concise and a expressive way to handle the different cases. Okay, let's say in terms of switch case, we are going to talk about pattern matching today. 
and uh, instead of using like you know switch and case labels like in the traditional way of doing it we are going to use much more expressive way to have more benefits we are going to see this so the first benefit is it is going to give improve in the terms of code readability and also it is going to reduce a lot of uh, lines of code which is nothing but uh, reducing the boilerplate of code and also it makes a complex structure of uh, data processing we are going to see how it actually works okay using switch case with pattern matching basically let's say instance of or equal to equal to or any custom patterns we can use it basically it is going to bind the matched value to variable okay whatever the variable we are going to use it for further processing we are going to see this no worries okay let's assume we have something called a uh, class demo in which i have something called main method okay so here actually i am having like multiple uh, methods i have written to show you guys like how it actually works and i am calling from here so how i can call the methods within this class i have to create an object for this class demo d equal to new demo of and then d dot what are the methods i have written i am just showing up so i have created like multiple methods to show from the scratch how it is a uh, traditional it works and how it is going to work with pattern matching to make you guys understand the difference between the traditional way of working as well as with the help with the help of pattern matching okay so first thing is instance of okay so first instance of what is instance of instance of is an operator to understand whether this object is of type this particular class or not okay that is what the purpose of instance of so traditional instance of is something but this method so i am going to call this method so that like this method is getting called so here what i am trying to do let's say object value is equal to register check it's nothing but here the value of this object is nothing but register now if i want to check whether this value is of type string right then what i should do if value instance of string if it is true only then i am going here and then i am doing casting to string um the, ob the object to string and then i am going to print it this is way of uh, doing in the traditional way of doing it but now with the help of pattern matching with respect to instance of i am going to show you how we can able to rewrite this particular logic so instead of uh, casting here what we can do object value equal to register type it's fine in the if itself we can able to check if the value is instance of type string if the value is if the value is a uh, instance of type string then automatically you can able to cast it to str and then you can able to print it so here what happens it's actually doing three things guys okay in the type pattern it's happening three things one is initializing the string str and then casting this object into string and then assigning this value to string str so there are three things happening instantiation initialization casting and assignments so if you guys see here it's actually uh, it's remove all the lists of like uh, boilerplate code okay that's how we can able to use pattern matching with respect to instance of now this pattern matching is not only with respect to instance of they have introduced this pattern matching with respect to uh, switch case also but if you guys remember before we go to switch case how it actually we have to work with uh, traditional if statements so if i go to traditional if statements i have written some logic here traditional if statements let's say i have something called object obj equal to register type if this object is of instance of string then i can do this else if this object is of different type let's say integer then print it as integer so this also like very old way of writing if else conditions multiple if else conditions right so how we can uh, uh, convert this basically traditional if statements into switch case so switch, switch case also like uh, to give a control based on the value of switch we can able to take a control of the program to the particular case okay but there are three things okay so in olden days we have to uh, write a switch case as a labels right so let's say it will be like a colon syntax okay now uh, we can able to rewrite with a different way of doing it let me first go through with the colon syntax which is a very traditional way of doing it so how to write that one is you guys see here switch statement with colon syntax the same thing if else i can write it like this right object obj equal to register check which object if this object is of type let's say case is str string then print here otherwise if it is all integer just print here if it's nothing like if it's a default go here so this is a traditional way of writing switch case with the labels and with the help of colon okay now it is again reformed or reevolved to convert into arrow syntax what is that arrow syntax is instead of doing like this multiple switch case uh, label statements what we can do in this object obj equal to register check all say if it switches of uh, object then you can directly have string here okay and then you can simply say yes 
and then you can remove all this you can remove all this bracing and everything and you don't need to give all the break statements here logically it will correct it and you can simply write whatever the logic you want but you have to use this arrow symbol here okay this is nothing but arrow syntax it's logically same okay now what is the uh, switch expression the switch expression is nothing but instead of using like a traditional way of like switch case and labels what we can do in the case you can able to have your value to be written as it is and then you can simply have one return statement here the entire switch will be written back okay so you are returning the value of switch based on whatever the case it matches so here return switch if this i value of i is equal to 10 here right if the i is uh, 10 that will go to either case 10 or 11 and yield 100 so yield is nothing but like it's kind of like giving the value back it's nothing but like colon syntax with respect to expressions so the same thing can be uh, redefined as arrow syntax arrow syntax is nothing but like this so that you don't need to write yield method yield uh, keyword okay so this is all about like switch expressions with colon syntax and switch expressions with respect to arrow syntax so in either way we can able to write it and we can able to use pattern matching so pattern matching is very very important it's not just evolved in java 17 it's it started from java 14 onwards but it's in multiple uh, premature uh, uh, like preview states and now it's in the kind of like standard versions okay and uh, let's see the next one so basically the rmi concept right so officially they have removed the outdated rmi act uh, activation apis so that like in java 17 onwards you won't see this okay and then also they have improved a lot of uh, improvements in the, with respect to garbage collection so they have enhanced the garbage collection performance and uh, especially with the g1 gc algorithms whatever they did and it's it's all a uh, lot of improvements with respect to java 17 and also uh, there is a concept called they introduced as something called foreign memory so what is that it basically enables the java applications to interact with the native core and memory outside the java virtual machine like jvm so, so far like we have used jvm and it uses all the memory and everything right but now you can also use the memory which is outside of jvm for your java applications basically it improves the performance and also uh, it based on like hardware resources it definitely helps uh, uh, the application to code uh, work properly okay and actually it is like one of the jep 409 apis to define the foreign functions and allocate memories okay this is one of the case and then there is one more thing they introduce something called hiding the jdk classes so uh, let's say if i don't want uh, my jdk classes to be visible i can do it from java 17 what is that so making the internal jdk classes invisible to the reflection api for enhanced security in order to increase the security i can stop or i can rest it my jdk classes to be visible to others okay why so it basically uh, prevents accidents access and also manipulation of sensitive informational uh, internal data okay how it actually works with the help of uh, recession like, like reflection they are actually stopping it so uh, it is against the potential security vulnerabilities and improves code stability so this is all about like the new features which they have introduced in java 17 i hope this is very clear if you haven't watched my previous videos so please go ahead and watch in my youtube channel where we have explained about each and every version of java with its new features and we have write our code and we have executed our code as it is okay and if you are new to our channel subscribe to it and also inform your friends and family and uh, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you like this video and don't forget to hit the notification button to get all my future videos i will see you in the next interesting video which is java 18